Our, our first question today is, <clears throat> what two words explain this book? Okay, there's 66 books in this Bible. It starts with Genesis through Malachi, and then it goes Matthew through Revelation. So if I'd asked for one word, you'd all said the same word, right? But I'm asking for two words. How do you explain the intent of this book in two words? What do you got? I'm sorry? Love and God. That's three words, but it's close. All right. <clears throat> um, anybody else? Foundational principles. Foundational principles. Okay, that's, that's excellent. What I have done, what I did, is <clears throat> I, ch I chose love God, right? And then I lost, yeah, I lost my little sign. Okay, I chose love God, but the, <clears throat> the focus is we the people have to love God, right? And we have to love God the way God said to love God, right? Jesus shows how important these words are in Mark 12, 30. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This love God is a verb. It's an action. It's what you do towards God, right? Okay, in Matthew, Jesus says, Matthew twenty-two forty, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's, so Genesis to Malachi, they hadn't written the New Testament yet, but Genesis to Malachi, he said, these two commandments, love God, love humans, right, hang everything in the Bible, the whole Old Testament Bible, and then once, once he died and went to heaven, then it included the New Testament, right? So the whole Bible, all 66 books, they hang on these two principles. So I brought, I brought a demonstration, right? I've got, I've got a phone receiver part up here that, with all the buttons, and then I've got the base, right? So, so this hangs, right? And what did he mean hang? I thought, uh, well, I'll look up the, the Greek behind the word hang, and I'll find out all kinds of great stuff, and it just means hang. <laughs> That's all it means, it just means hang. So I brought this, and, and this part is hanging on the cord to this part. Now, if I take my cutters, right? Beautiful set of cutters, right? And I cut this cord, chunk, right? Then <clears throat> they're disconnected. They're no longer connected to each other. I didn't want to ruin the cord there, but you get the picture. They're, they're no longer connected to each other. And that's what God is saying with, um, <clears throat> with the Bible. If you're not loving God and loving humans, then you're disconnected from everything the Bible is teaching. So all the Bible is connected to love God first and then love humans. But in practicality, it works backwards. It works the other way. So um, the system fails when it's not connected to God's way. If you're not loving God God's way, then you're not hanging on, it's not hanging together, it's separated, right? If you're not loving humans God's way. Now, you know, most people love <coughs> their kids, right? Because they're their kids. It's like it comes with the package. It's just, you know, it doesn't matter where you live on the planet, Almost everybody who has children love their children, right? What has that got to do with the Bible? In some cases, nothing. It's just the way God made it, right? So <clears throat> what, is the God, what does God's love system produce? Well, it produces many things. The biggest is you will never die or you'll be given eternal life, John 10, 28. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. So loving God and humans results in eternal life. Okay, most two billion people on the planet follow Jesus, and they're all in the, in the back of their minds, loving Jesus, which to them includes Christmas, loving Jesus results with living forever. And, and throughout the last 2,000 years, it's been shortened down to give your heart to Jesus and go to heaven when you die. When you get to heaven, you live happily forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, right? So you just go on living forever, you get eternal life. So the, the love system results in, if, if it's the right love system, the result is eternal life. 
But if it's the wrong love system, it's not eternal life, right? If it's the wrong love system, then you end up in the second resurrection, which is right back where you started from, pretty much. It's like you're, now you're a full-grown person, right? God doesn't make you a baby again. But if you, if you died at 80, you, in the second resurrection, you come up with 80 years of experience, and you start all over again. This time you're going to meet Jesus on day one, right? And you can see that in uh, Ezekiel 37. There's, there's enough information there that says Jesus keeps telling all these dry bones when they come to life, I am the one who brought you out of the graves. So they're meeting Jesus on day one and they've got 100 years to get with the program, right? If humans learn to love by God's standards, they will be given eternal life. It's, it's simple. But the complication is, what do you mean love? Right? Now, <clears throat> down here on earth, we, we all pretty much know what love is and what love isn't in general terms. It's like um, <clears throat> if, um, you know, if, if parents take good care of their kids, that's love. If, kid, if parents abuse their kids, that's not love. Right? Okay, but, but there's a God level love that we need to understand if we get it wrong. Then we end up in the second resurrection. We miss out on a thousand years of being, you know, being with God in, you know, in, uh, in super bodies, in, in angelic bodies, in heavenly bodies. If humans learn to love God by God's standards, they'll be given eternal life. Luke 18, 29. <clears throat> and I say unto you, there is none, no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present life Right? And in the age to come, eternal life. So, so serving Christ and his purposes, the end result of the right kind of love <coughs> is eternal life. People understand the end. They just don't understand how to get there. Right? And, and you know, two billion people around the earth. You know, if you walk into any place and you say, Christmas is not Christ-like, <laughs> you know, you might get 10 people pounce on you think you're a terrorist. Right? Because it's like, you can't say that. Everybody knows you worship Jesus through Christmas. In fact, when we moved to <clears throat> Hawkins, Texas, our, our kids uh, were in the high school and uh, we wouldn't let them do Christmassy stuff. And so some of the teachers asked my wife and I, how come you don't believe in Jesus? And we about fell over. <laughs> it's like, what? What do you mean we don't believe in Jesus? And they said, well, you don't keep Christmas. So in their minds, it was love Jesus, love Christmas. So just, just saying you love God is not enough to please God, which, which is like, well, why would you say that? Well, fortunately, I got it out of the Bible. The Apostle John, who is very close to Jesus, tells us that saying the words, I love God, is not enough. John, 1 John 4.20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Now, that's not politically correct language. That's not even biblically correct language, you would think, right? It's like, wait a minute, John, you're the apostle of love. You, Jesus is love and merciful, and you're the apostle of love. And, and, and how can you call people liars? How can you say people that say, I love God and hate their brother is a liar? Because he's making the point. He's making the point. You can't be fully connected to the love of God and hate humans. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, um, <clears throat> why did he say this? Because does seeing people make it easier to love them? Okay, back, back in verse 20, he says he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And if you think that through, it's like, which is easier? Which is easier, to love a human with all their frailties and shortcomings and, you know, they didn't treat me nice last week. Which is easier to love, a human or the perfect God? And the human conclusion would be, it's easier to love the perfect God. <coughs> right? But the scripture is saying, no, you first have to love the imperfect humans before you can begin to love the invisible God. It's like, but God, you've got that backwards. 
sorry, he created it all, so he doesn't have it backwards. We've got it backwards if we don't see it his way. So does seeing people make it easier to love them, right? Maybe the answer is in this next verse that we're going to look at, 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest or made known. Okay, so now, you know, this is not politically correct either, but here we go. This is the Bible. You know, this says, okay, this is how we can tell the children of God from the children of the devil, right? Whoever does not practice righteousness, right? So... How do we learn righteousness? By keeping the commandments, by doing the law of God, right? So if we don't practice righteousness, we are not of God, nor is he that does not love his brother. So if we don't love humans and we don't practice righteousness, then we're children of the devil. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm reading the book. I'm reading it out of the Bible. This is what God is saying to us. So we practice righteousness on other human beings. Can you practice righteousness on God? Can you? How? How do, how do you practice righteousness on God? By doing right. Okay, but, but is he over here? Is he over there? Or is, you know, do, how do you, you know, do you do righteous acts to God? You do it to humans. You do it to God through humans. I don't have it in the text, but the scripture says in Matthew 25, uh, 25, it says, um, he says, if you give, if you give and you help and you visit the sick and so on, you did it under me. And the, and the sheep, and the sheep say, well, how, what, when? And then he turns to the goats and he says, depart from me, you know, and, and he said, you didn't visit it. You didn't give. And they said, when didn't we do this to you, Jesus? He said, inasmuch as you didn't do it to the humans, you weren't doing it to me. So you love God by loving the humans you can see is how you learn to love the God you can't see. Right? So next John shows us how God-level love is learned. 1 John 2, 5. He says, but whoever keeps his word, right? it's three simple words keeps his word. Another place Jesus said you have to live by every word of God. So if you find the word Feast of Tabernacles in the Bible, you are supposed to live by those words. Right? So he says, and, and what happens with Christmas is Christmas blinds the eyes of people who want to worship Jesus from the true worship system which is worshiping at the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the way he laid it out. Now, he's God, he's king, he's creator. And if he says, this is what I want you to do, and you go, no, I want to do it that way. I want to do it through Christmas. Is he going to be happy? No, but the people think he's happy because they've had their eyes blinded by Satan and all those people for the last 2,000 years who have been beating the drum for Christmas. And besides, Christmas is warm and fuzzy and cozy and sweet and kind, and we love giving children the gifts, and we drink eggnog and whatever we do, and we just have a terrific time. You're taking away our really good time. Well, I'm sorry, but Jesus said, worship me the other way. I don't want you to worship me this way. You know, but they can't see it. They've been blinded. So. Whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. It's a growing, developing thing. It's, it's developing towards a mature love for God. Would you say King David had a mature love for God? How many would you say yes? Right, right. Man after God's own heart. Now, how did David do that? By keeping God's word. <laughs> right? He studied. He meditated. He, he said, oh, I love your commandments. We keep his commandments, but have we gotten to the stage where we love his commandments? If the whole world kept his commandments, it would be a fabulous world. I could take up a collection. I'd say, give me your car keys. And you would say, here, take my car keys. No, wait, you can't start a car without car keys, right? Some cars you can't, right? <laughs> but anyhow, you know, um, you wouldn't be locking your cars up anymore because one of the commandments says, don't steal. And then you would say, well, everybody's going to live by that commandment of no stealing, so I need to lock the car. 
<laughs> you don't want to try that out, folks. We're not there yet. You leave your car unlocked and you can pretty much guarantee something getting, getting stolen out of it. So perfected in him, i.e. developing towards maturity. By this we know we are in him. So learning God level love is by keeping his words, right, is how we learn God level love. And if we don't do it by his words, we got nothing. It's like, but, but the Bible says to keep Christmas. Oh, where? Well, surely it says that. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. Surely it says that. Find it. You know, it's not there. 1 John 5, 3 says, this is the love of God that we... <laughs> Wait a minute, who wrote this? <laughs> this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. Keeping Feast of Tabernacles is a commandment. What is keeping Feast of Tabernacles? It's pointing to the great awesome day in the future when all nations will send representatives to Jerusalem to worship King Jesus in the Jewish capital Jerusalem, the new capital of the world, and they're going to worship and see Jesus with their own eyeballs. I'm guessing he'll turn down his beauty and his radiance so humans can actually see something. Right? Because humans are impressed when they see something, less impressed when they can't see something. So on his last day as a human being, Jesus said, John 14, 15, If you love me, if you're going to love me, Jesus, keep my commandments. <laughs> right? So, so the most important thing a human can do if they want to learn to love Jesus is find all the commandments Jesus gave from Genesis 1-1 all the way to the end of the book of Revelation. Find all the commandments you can find by reading and studying the scriptures and then keep them. Jesus rejects people who are not commandment keepers. You know, and they've developed this theology where if, if you want to live by the law, if you want to live by the commandments, you're a legalist and therefore get, Jesus rejects you. And it's like, now, anybody know where that scripture is? That's not in there. What Jesus does reject is those who live, who are lawless, right? Without law. They live outside the law. Do we like lawless people? Anybody here like lawless people? If somebody stole your car, would you like that person? You know, <laughs> it's like if a terrorist comes and shoots people up, do we like those people? They're lawless. We don't like lawlessness. And neither does Jesus. Luke 6:46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? And so Jesus is saying, I've given you commandments. I've given you the law. I've given you my word. You must keep my, because I'm God and I'm king and I'm coming back to rule the planet. So what must we do to truly love Jesus? John 14, 23, Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Verse 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words. It's, it's black and white. It's so simple. And yet people have, they override that. They've been blinded. Give your heart to Jesus, go to heaven when you die and keep Christmas. Oh, and Easter. I forgot Easter. But anyhow, so learning love, love of God, whom we have not seen, requires our obedience to every word of God. That's how you love God. That's how you begin to develop and mature your love for God because you obey Him. You have fear of God. You have fear to disobey God. Matthew 4.4. 4. But He answered and He said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, Genesis 1.1 1, 1 to end of book of Revelation, every word of God. You go in there, you find Feast of Tabernacles instead of Christmas, you keep Feast of Tabernacles. You find Passover instead of Easter, you keep Passover. And, and it's like, it's in the book. Oh, but that doesn't matter. Wait! If you tell God what He wrote doesn't matter, all bets are off and you're in the second resurrection. You missed out on a thousand years of glory, right? So next we're going to see how, you know, we're going to study how to see invisible love. That's our next lesson. But for now, we see that God-level love comes by keeping and practicing God's commandments.